Al Bruno played for the 1952 Toronto Argonauts. At that time, Mike Riley hadn't even been born. There is a dramatic difference in age and experience in today's coaching matchup. Offensively, explosive wide receiver and kick return specialist Earl Winfield has been the Tie Cats catalyst. The Bombers have looked to veteran wide receiver James Murphy for the big play. And on defense, the Tie Cats are led by defensive end Grover Covington, who led the CFL in sacks with 25. Safety Benny Thompson sets the tone for Winnipeg's defense with his intimidating style. Welcome to Winnipeg and CFN's presentation of the East Division semifinal. Winnipeg Stadium, the Blue Bombers and the Hamilton Tiger Cats just seconds away from the start of the East semifinal. The winner to go to Toronto next weekend to play the Argonauts in the Eastern final. Both teams 9-9 nine and nine on the season. Evenly matched. Tom Porras, of course, coming on to quarterback the Thai Cats after Mike Kerrigan in the midst of an outstanding season suffered a season-ending injury. Sean Salisbury, his counterpart today. The Bombers closed the season by losing their last three games, but they got second place because Hamilton lost its last game 49-9 in Toronto. So you'd have to say the Bombers kind of backed in, but they're not making any apologies. They're happy to be playing this game here. Neil Lumsden, we talked to Mike Riley, the Bomber coach, yesterday about how he envisioned the game starting for his team. and. Is it turning out that way? Well, it's kind of interesting you bring that up because he said, well, I think we'll end up receiving the ball. And then speaking on Winnipeg's behalf, their offense will drive the football, but we won't score. We'll put a good drive together, then we'll punt the ball away. Hamilton will be on offense, and within the first two plays or so, we're going to get a sack. And that sack will set the tempo for our football team. And we sort of looked at him and said, are you serious about this? He said, yes, I believe that's the way it's going to happen. Let's see if it unfolds that way. Ken Petway has the opening kickoff to the Bomber 20. Moving to the outside to the 25 and then down at the 27 yard line. Ed Gadavekis down to make the stop for the Thai Cats. As Sean Salisbury from the University of Southern California brings the Bombers onto the field. Didn't play last week in Vancouver because of badly bruised ribs. Is wearing some protection today, but not a flak jacket. He chose not to wear a flak jacket. You can see the left side of his body almost like a big piece of cardboard hanging out. He feels the flak jacket hurts his throwing motion. The soreness is only on the left side, so just pad the left side. And you can bet the Thai Cats will try to give Salisbury some clean shots in that area. Tony Johns carrying on the first play from scrimmage of the Eastern Division semifinal, and he'll get two, maybe three yards out near the Blue Bomber 30. Daryl Corbin in on the stop. He is back in the Hamilton lineup after breaking a bone in his right arm. He's been out for the last month, but returning today. And it's a good thing he is back. Not that the players that haven't been in there haven't done a good job, but he adds another dimension to that defense and to their special teams play. Second down and seven. Blue Bombers at their 30. Salisbury, lots of time. Throws, and it's no good. Intended for Ken Whiney down that left sideline. And I couldn't quite tell whether Whiney just didn't get turned around to look at the ball or whether it was high, but he didn't really make an attempt to catch the ball. Salisbury tried to thread that ball into a seam. Didn't get the opportunity, and the timing just wasn't there. So we'll see Bob Cameron take a shot at his first punt. He's had a great year. Well, those 188 punts by Cameron are the most in the CFL this season. Bombers third and seven at their 30. Cameron, Winnipeg's Shenley nominee, is top Canadian. Low snap. Cameron picks it up and gets a good kick away. He's kicking into the wind a little bit. Winfield with the catch. Bombers will be called for no yards as Winfield gets a yard or two on the return to the Hamilton 47-yard line. No yards. Winnipeg number 39. First down. That's Darren Uchin called for no yards against the Blue Bombers, and it'll give Hamilton the football at the Winnipeg 50-yard line to begin their first offensive series of the game under the direction of 30-year-old Tom Porras in his fourth year with the Thai Cats. And he'll hand off on first down to Jed Tommy. Tommy gets two, maybe three yards, similar to what Tony Johns got on his first carry for Winnipeg. 
the Tommy back in the lineup has some, had played there was playing with some bruised ribs he'll hit up in here very quickly great job by Riley and Lloyd Fairbanks on the left side he hits up in but just that little stumble running into that pile took away about three or four yards of his progress ran into James West after being steered to the left West is playing with muscle spasms in his back Second down and seven. Tie Cats, Bomber 47. Porus with a blitz coming. Will get the ball away. Man wide open. And Chapdelaine can't catch it at the 35 yard line of Winnipeg. It was a little bit high, the pass by Porus. Al Bruno said the key to their football team today, especially on offense, as we look at Tom Porus, is Tom Porus being able to read and pick up and throw the hot patterns. When Winnipeg brings the Benny Thompson from the safety spot or their halfbacks, be it Petway or Sampson, to be able to recognize that play and hurt the defense. And he thinks if they can do that early, he'll settle down the Winnipeg defense in respect to their blitzing. Third and seven. Paul is Ballaston. Will punt. Has a helping wind, and he hits a low end over end kick that bounces at the 15 and into the end zone. Paul Shorten and Ken Petway back for the Blue Bombers. Shorten will handle it. And will concede the single point run out some time if he can as the Bombers work into the win. We're not quite three minutes into the first quarter of the East semifinal at Winnipeg Stadium and Hamilton leads by one. Two minutes and 46 seconds the time of the 62 yard single by Hamilton kicker Paulus Baldiston. Ticats lead Winnipeg one nothing. East Division semifinal game the Blue Bombers first and ten from there 35. And the handoff is to Buster Rhymes on a reverse, and he's thrown for a big loss. Back inside the Blue Bomber 25 yard line. Rhymes made quite a debut. His first game with the Bombers in BC last weekend, but not a very good start here today. Sean Salisbury played six games during the regular season, starting today at quarterback with Jesse and Johns in the backfield. Rhymes at slot back in the lineup, replacing Perry Tuttle, whiny at wide receiver, and Bob Molly. His third game back from a season long knee problem on the offensive line. Salisbury for Jesse on second down and long. Jesse hit by Corbin, not able to hold on to the ball. And very quickly, the Blue Bombers will have to kick the football the second time they've had it. And each time they've run two play plays and been forced to punt. Well, I think right there shows you why Hamilton's glad they've got Corbin back in the lineup. His quickness and ability to react to where the ball's thrown when it's thrown in his zone and getting to it the same time the ball does. Third down and almost 21 yards for the Blue Bombers from their 24 yard line. Bob Cameron to punt again. Wind not real strong but it's into Cameron's face. A low end over end kick that's picked up by Benny Thompson. He must feel that one of the tie cats touched it. Now let's see what the officials rule. Thompson certainly played that as if he felt it hit a Hamilton player and was then a free ball. Can't think of any other reason, Neil, why he would act in that fashion. No, and Benny Thompson's been around and is, is very aware of what goes on and what the calls are in special teams. He wouldn't do it unless he really believed they touched it. And sure enough, Benny Thompson makes the right decision. Very heads up decision too. Good job of protecting the punter. Hamilton's trying to jam as many people as they possibly can. And I think right there. Bounced like off number 20. Arnold Grievous had appeared to hit him in the back. Thompson spotted that. Luckily for him so did the officials and the Bombers have the football at the Hamilton 50. Strange play gives Winnipeg an early break. Buster Rhymes with a football on a quick pass from Salisbury. He's to the 35. Covington brings him down, but it's a 15-yard game for Winnipeg. I think right there, Chris, Chris Walby showing you the type of attitude and enthusiasm that he wants to get into his offensive team. He's going to come from the other side of the field. This is a screen to Rhymes, screen to the slot back, we might add. They want to get the, him the ball as much as, as much as they possibly can, but watch Walby come in near the end of the play. Right there, puts a hit on Arnold Grievous. Bombers first and 10, Hamilton 35. Tim Jesse finds a pretty good opening and is inside the 20 to the Ticat 18 yard line.
So the Bombers move the ball quickly after recovering that punt that hit Grievous. Great read by Jesse. It looks like and supposedly the play was going to the other side. They had the offensive guard and tackle pulling across. Jesse makes his decision very quickly, comes back against the flow. Mike Riley said they wanted to run more or give the backs more attempts at breaking them. Jesse played seven games during the season. Another late addition to the Bomber lineup. He has the ball again. This time gets only a yard. It looked like Corbin got a piece of him just as he hit the line of scrimmage. That's Corbin sneaking up. What he did was get up into that gap very quickly. Comes down and makes a hit. Swoops was activated on the defensive line for this game as the Ticats go with three Americans. The linebacking core is all in port with Corbin returning from injury and Patterson moving outside. And then the secondary with Shields expected to follow James Murphy to either side of the field throughout the game. Salisbury throws, has Murphy open, but he can't catch the ball at the five yard line on second down and nine. Murphy right there, but he couldn't catch it. Bob, you're right. Hamilton is going to put Lance Shields on Murphy wherever he goes. And here's Murphy going down, just stopping up very quickly in that little area. Comes back to the football, very catchable. Good protection for Salisbury. Well, the coaches talk all the time about execution, and they must watch with great dismay at a play like that, which was perfectly executed except for the catch. 25-yard field goal attempt by Trevor Kennard is up, and it's good, and the Blue Bombers go in front 3-1. to one. CFN and Foster's bringing you the best of Canadian football all the way to the Grey Cup. A 25-yard field goal by Winnipeg's Trevor Kennard came at 6.31 of the first quarter. The Blue Bombers lead Hamilton now 3-1 as Kennard kicks off to Wally Zatilny at the 27. Zatilny finds a little room up to the 47 of the Ticats. Let's bring in Dave Hodge and Tom Larshide for their thoughts on the early stages of this semifinal game. Well, I think we should pay attention to Buster Rhymes, who is uh, only playing his second CFL game, but he had eight catches last week against BC and the big play in that drive to a field goal. Well, the turnover, too, uh, will be a, an important factor in this game, and that completely turned the field position around that was in favor of Hamilton in this opening period. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll see what Tom Porras and the Hamilton offense can do, and Rocky DiPietro nearly made a spectacular one-handed catch. But didn't, and it'll be second and ten for Porus. Wouldn't surprise me to see Porus look to Chapdelaine and right there, Rocky Di Pietro earlier on, try to establish some inside threat, some movement, get the receivers and the running backs up the field in the inside, try to shrink that defense down, get them to close in a bit. Porus straight back, blitz coming. He gets the ball away and completes it to Di Pietro to the 39 of Winnipeg as Porus really got leveled by James West. Well, there's the difference to be able to stand in there and throw the football, read where the pattern's going to come from. Porus knows Di Pietro has position on the halfback. He has to hang in there. And James Wild West comes there, but comes a little bit too late. Watch the position right here. Get to the inside so the defender can't get between you and the football. Good pattern by Rocky Di Pietro. They mark the ball at the bomber, 39, first and 10, Hamilton. Porus will hand off to Sarton, and he's got some room. Inside the 35 to the 34 for a gain of about five. Neil, I think we should point out that shot that West put on Porus. I don't know how many quarterbacks would have got up the way Porus did. He is extremely strong in the upper body. He really is. He's very resilient. Porus at quarterback with Tommy and Sarton as his running backs in the Hamilton offense. The receiving core with Winfield, the Shenley finalist outside in the offensive line that has allowed the fewest sacks in the CFL. A blitz coming as Porras throws for Chapdelaine and he can't get to it. There's a flag down. Interference will be called against Daryl Sampson at the one yard line. Once again, Porras is, is under pressure. Forward pass interference. Winnipeg number 30. First down. This time the pressure came a little bit late. The interference is on. Number 30, Daryl Sampson. You're going to see the pressure from the backside. Fowler's going to be the guy that puts the hit on him. But watch the push. Right there, not allowing Chapdelaine to come back inside to the football. That was the no-no. And it was a very catchable ball. As a matter of fact, Neil, it looked like he would catch it until that push came. Pass to DiPietro. 
on first down from the six, which is where they ruled the infraction took place. And DiPietro gets it down to the, well, close to the two-yard line of the Blue Bombers. In, in weather like this, they talk about the fullbacks and the running backs being an important part. I think DiPietro and his style and the way he runs his patterns, the way he runs with the football after he catches it, trying to hit people, he can be as important as a good fullback in a game like this. Ty Katz sent in some blocking strength. Second and goal at the Blue Bomber, two. Martin Sarton carrying, and he got there. He just broke the plane. The ball comes out, but Sarton broke the plane of the goal line, and the Hamilton Tiger Cats have the touchdown, and they also have a 7-3 lead. Hamilton lines up in that power offensive set. Steve Jackson, 74, is going to lead. Then Tommy to the inside. Sarton's just going to simply drop that head and try to find a gap behind Ralph Schultz, Miles Gorell. They reached the ball toward the goal line, Neil, and just got it there. And just hung on to it long enough, too. And that's just what you have to do. Osbaldiston adds the convert, and the Ticats lead by five at eight to three with six minutes and 13 seconds left in the opening quarter of the East semifinal. The second quarter will begin here at Winnipeg Stadium with the Blue Bombers second and ten at the Hamilton 37 and down by eight points, 11 to three. John Salisbury. Lots of time. Throws knocked down by Corbin. The pass intended for Fabie, but Daryl Corbin who's back after being out a month with a broken arm, knocked it down, and Corbin has really made his presence felt. And speaking of arms, Stan Mikwas has a pretty good club in that left hand there, doesn't he? Mikwas playing with a broken thumb. It's a good thing they've taken the head slap out of the game. That looks like a real weapon dangling at his <laughs> side there. That arm's about a six inches longer than it used to be. On third down, Trevor Kennard will attempt a 44-yard field goal. He has a bit of wind with him. Bob Cameron puts it down. Kennard has it far enough, and he has it between the uprights. So the Blue Bombers get a relatively long field goal to answer a 48-yarder in the first quarter by Paulus Baldiston, and it's now a five-point football game. One of the things I've always been impressed about is Trevor Kennard is how quickly he gets the ball up in the air. I don't think there's ever a concern that it'll be blocked. It's Tom Porras, once again, not bad field position after a field goal by Winnipeg out on their 35-yard line. Will he continue to work the inside receivers and the running backs? They also wanted to run more coming into this game, realizing how important it could be. First and 10 from there, 35 for Porras and Company. Porras hands off to Jeff Tommy. Big hole right side, and he has 10 yards and a little bit more. And a tie cat first down. There you go, get that fullback up in there. Ralph Schultz and Miles Gorell, the right tackle and guard. Give him a pretty good seam. Give the ball deep into the backfield for Tommy so he can see if the initial spot is closed off, he can make, and he's given time to react. He didn't have to there. Two Winnipeg linebackers got pushed outside on that play. Huge hole. This time, James West is in the backfield to meet Martin Sarton. That seems to be the key to the Winnipeg defense. If James West can be flying around, making things happen as he always does, he beats the block inside here, goes between the pulling tackle, Floyd Fairbanks, and gets in the way of Sarton. James West didn't practice much this week because of muscle spasms in his back. But when asked yesterday if he thought he might not be able to play, he said, are you kidding? Second down and 13. Porras goes long for DiPietro, and he can't catch it. Tightly covered at the Bomber 40 by Daryl Sampson and linebacker Delbert Fowler. Mike Riley suggested to us that Winnipeg might play an awful lot of two-man in their secondary, which means that the corners would lock up into the man to the wide receivers. The two halfbacks would drop back not too deep and play free up, and the linebackers would take the inside receivers. And we saw a good example of that right there where the halfback, Sampson, was on his own and allowed to react to the football. We'll see now how Paulus Ballaston deals with kicking into the wind. And he just got that one away. Caught, fumbled, and then picked up by Paul Shorten at the 40-yard line of the Blue Bammers. Rod Hill came very close to blocking that punt. Blue Bombers, first and ten 
at the Ticats 16 yard line. Salisbury lots of time in the end zone and it's knocked away intended for Rhymes. Jim Rockford got back get a hand up and bat it away. Great reaction by Rockford moving back. He's, he's got an area where he has to go to but when he watches Salisbury and then he turns back to the short side of the field. Rockford reacts by getting into a back pedal and just just getting up in time. Great defensive play. Semi roll to the left. The pocket's going to move a bit. Jesse and the other running back John stays in. Salisbury really gets a good chance to throw the football without being bothered. And Salisbury has not taken a real good hard shot Neil on those ribs yet. He's been hit a number of times but not really in a fashion that would cause any great concern for the Blue Bombers which of course is uh, very good news for them the way this first half has evolved. Chris Walby at the bench. Second down and 10. Blue Bombers at the Hamilton 16. Salisbury with Covington after him gets it away. Touchdown to Rhymes, but there's a flag down holding against the Blue Bombers. And the touchdown by Rhymes will be canceled. Holding. Winnipeg 54. Second. I believe that was 64, which would be right guard Bob Molly. Sixty four stepping on Tim Lorenz that right hand pulls down on Lorenz he goes down and that's what he was called for. Looks behind first to see if a flag in fact has been thrown. They'll have to give it another crack. Second and long from the Hamilton 26 for the Blue Bombers. Salisbury puts it deep for Ryan. And he goes up against Rockford but can't make the catch. Jim Rockford able to break up the play. 3.15 left in the first half. And now we'll see Kennard again. And remember, earlier in this drive, he kicked the field goal that the Bombers gave up because they had a chance to make a first down. You know, they've got Rockford on the corner. And that a lot of people thought Winnipeg would go after him. And I think they have tried to test him. But in two or three occasions, he's been equal to the test. Looking like he's been beaten early but being able to respond very well and breaking up all the plays. I should uh, elaborate Neil they gave up that earlier field goal because of a penalty against Hamilton that enabled them to make a first down. Kennard will try from the 33 and he makes it so they do get the three points and tie the game at 11. This CFN playoff game is brought to you by Foster's. Second and six tie cats at their 39. Horace. And nearly picked off up at the 50 intended for Estelle. Rod Hill just about picked it off and he was injured earlier and is still hurting. He took a helmet on his leg earlier and favoring it still. Well that helmet hit was on the back of the calf and the calf is so important when it comes to stepping up and trying to sprint ahead and I think that's what he does doing making a great defensive play but putting an awful lot of stress on that calf. Two thirty seven left in the first half as Rod Hill again in obvious great pain and unable to leave the field without some assistance. Ticats will have to punt into the win now and Winnipeg should come up with reasonable field position. The game tied 11 11 Neil and I think this is the kind of game that most of us expected. Neither of these teams has shown the offensive consistency to you know to make you believe this would be a blowout type game where somebody scored a pile of points. No, no, and coming into this game, a lot of people felt that both teams were stacking their defenses, preparing themselves for that type of contest, knowing it was going to be physical, and you don't have to tell anybody that. But Hamilton, for example, dressing six linebackers uh, above their three starters. Uh, Winnipeg activating Delbert Fowler, Ramel Andrews, some fresh legs, seeing that the, the defensive part of the game may very well be the key. So on third down and six, Paul is Baldiston. Will punt from his 25 yard line, the line of scrimmage, the 39 of Hamilton. Last time the Ticats punted, as Ballaston conceded a safety. We won't see that this time. Short kick, shortened with it at the 50 of Winnipeg. 
And he's able to get back to the 54 of the Blue Bombers. Heads up play by Winnipeg. Now instead of just putting one man deep, they're putting a man in the middle. This time Paul Shorten to take that punt as he comes up limping in case it is a bit shorter, not allowing it to bounce around, getting the ball, getting it backfield, downfield, and getting good field position. You were on the artificial surface before the game. It's not hard, is it? No, it's not hard. Actually, it was a little bit wet because they had just finished wiping the snow off. But it'll be harder. Everything's harder when it's cooler. 23-yard punt by his ball is in the Blue Bombers at center field with a first and 10. Two and a half minutes left first half. Salisbury throw is complete to Ken Whining. And he's down to the Hamilton 41-yard line. Ken Whining's worked both the inside and outside receiver spot for Winnipeg. Watch how he'll go down. Little burst right there to get the defensive back to step back, to get back on his heels, and he plants and comes back to the football. Whiney caught two passes all season long. He was injured in the injury much of the year. Replacing Perry Tuttle in the starting lineup today. First and 10 bombers at the Hamilton 41. Salisbury gets it away and completes it to James Murphy to the tie cat 25. Well, we talked that Salisbury was not a scrambling type of quarterback, but he has good mobility laterally. And that lateral movement right there and a little bit of a basketball jab step allowed him just that half a second more right there to pull up and throw the ball downfield to Murphy. Winnipeg receivers are doing a good job giving the quarterback a target. Paul Shorten of the Blue Bombers, the latest player to be banged up in this game. Tim Jesse carrying head hard as he tried to move to the outside. Daryl Corbin really came up and popped Tim Jesse. Oh, popped him. I, I don't know if that describes <laughs> it. We heard that up here. Corbin's lateral movement. He's going, you can't see him sideways. And he Jesse tries to get upfield. And boom. This is a training film. Look at 38. Move, move. Now they just explode upfield where the, the offensive line ended. Jesse goes about 185. He came out on the short end of that one, you'd have to say. Second down, Blue Bombers, about seven yards to go. Salisbury, man wide open. It's Whiney. He's to the 10 and inside of the nine-yard line of the Ticats. Ken Whiney, with two catches on this drive, has matched his season total for pass reception. Riley knew that James Murphy would receive most of the attention, so they decided to go backside. You see how deep Rockford was? giving Whiney plenty of space, assuming because it's the backside of the play, they wouldn't go to him as quickly. Good play calling by Sean Salzburg. First and goal, Blue Bombers, Hamilton nine yard line. Salisbury for Jesse, touchdown. Use the running backs when they're tighter downfield. Number five just went to your right of your screen in motion. The linebackers are coming, and Salisbury picks them up. There is no one within five yards. Howard Fields tries to make a saving tackle, but wasn't able to. Again, emphasize the job that Salisbury's doing, mixing his plays up and giving Hamilton the different looks and using and getting the ball to different receivers. The convert by Trevor Kennard puts the Blue Bombers in front by 18 to 11 with a minute 14 left until halftime. It's a crowd there. Looks for <laughs> looks for the flag. Yeah. Is that not a natural reaction? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see one and the relief he must have felt over that and then the number one signs go up a little early to make that declaration but the Blue Bombers do now have a seven point lead. They were down 11 three after the first quarter but about scored Hamilton. By 15 to <laughs> nothing in the second quarter. It took me a minute to figure that out. 15 to nothing. <laughs> well, as I said, when it well, gets it's cold, cold it's <laughs> harder and slower. A five-play, 55-yard drive by the Blue Bombers. Salisbury talking with Lee Saltz, who's the backup quarterback for Winnipeg today. Zatelny with Kennard's kickoff. And he brings it back to the 40, a minute nine still remaining. Until halftime. Sean Salisbury said before the game and during this week that 
he wanted to come off and, and have a good football game. There's Bruce Limmerman, the offensive coordinator, chatting with him, going over what he has seen downfield. He felt it was time for him to explode for a big one. Well, he's on his way, and I think that Hamilton's going to have to get in his face, get some pressure on him to stop him. Tom Porras in the Hamilton offense. Under the gun a bit now to do something from their 41-yard line. Porras looking to set up a screen and then overthrows Jed Tommy, but the Blue Bombers had that well covered. They really did. Reacted awfully well, too well, according by the looks of Tom Porras. A little chat with Delbert Fowler. Well, Fowler hasn't played much this year, and he wants to renew acquaintances with everybody in this one game that's typical of him to go over and say something to the opposition player and most times with Fowler it's a it's nothing derogatory it's just a friendly remark well he loves to talk when he's playing as you said it's, it's it's never anything nasty he just loves to chat second and ten the blitz coming Benny Thompson is picked up Porus gets it away and completes it to Estelle into the Blue Bomber 46 yard line excellent execution by the Thai Cats picking up the blitz and then Porus on the money to Estelle Great pass and catch, but watch Benny Thompson picked up by Martin Sarton right here in the middle. Good block on Benny Thompson. That's not an easy job. Estelle has good inside position. Rod Hill made the stop, and the Ticats with 49 seconds left in the first half. First and 10 at the Bomber, 46. Forrest looking for Winfield, throws it into the arms of Rod Hill who limps around with it and then will I think run out of bounds before he takes another shot favoring that right leg but uh, the Bombers take over as Winfield Neil either cut off the pattern or came inside I'm not sure what well, but Porras's pass was way over his head well, you can see right there Al Bruno and Porras and Winfield talking about the problem in communication Winfield just that little look outside and releasing to the end and I think what they're telling him is they wanted him to release back outside to stay closer to the sidelines. Rod Hill knows he hasn't got an awful lot of steps left in that leg and doesn't want to waste them. 31 seconds until first half. The Blue Bombers take away what was developing as a Hamilton scoring opportunity. Tim Jesse carrying on first down left side across the 15 to maybe the 16 for a gain of Close to four yards. Hill, the leading interceptor on the Blue Bombers this season. He picked off seven. Team that does not intercept a lot of passes. But a big one there by Hill. Todd Dillon, the backup quarterback for Hamilton today. Should keep that in mind. A quarterback who's had some success against this Winnipeg team this year when he was with the Ottawa Rough Riders. Brought the Riders in here and beat the Blue Bombers earlier this season. Jesse carrying on second down, finds some good room. Jesse has tremendous speed. He's up to the 41 of the Blue Bombers with four seconds left in the first half. Well, a play like that is able to go and mature downfield as well. It means everyone's getting a helmet on somebody. Tony Johns, number 23, lead block, comes through and just gets enough of Corbin right there to disallow Corbin and not allow him to get, get around the corner. Good explosiveness by Jesse. Blue Bombers have called a timeout to discuss what they'll do on what will likely be the final play of the first half. Mike Riley having some fun on the sidelines. You know, this is as good as Jesse has looked in the last month and a half. He, he made quite an impact when he joined the Bombers, but they have been so-so since then, but he looks very good today. Let's see what Winnipeg does. Salisbury looks like he'll put it up. Tried to, the ball comes out, and it's recovered by Johns, but that'll be the final play of the first half. So the Bombers wanted to air it out and take a shot at a touchdown, but didn't get it. They lead by seven at halftime. Statistically, an edge for the Blue Bombers and a wide edge, 14 to six in first downs, 184 to 80 in yards, and 20 minutes to 10 as we round off the time of possession. Well, that goes back to what Mike Riley said to us yesterday. He wanted to be able to move the chains, put some first downs together. When you do that, you add some time in the clock. You really take total control, and that shows you right there, 20 minutes. That's outstanding. And two turnovers by Hamilton and none by Winnipeg, also a story there. Halftime, 18-11, Blue Bombers lead, and they kick off to begin the second half. 
Kenner to Wally Zatilny. Zatilny finds an opening and is back to the bomber 47 yard line. Tom Porras in a snowstorm now nearly picked off by Rod Hill on Hamilton's first offensive play of the second half. It began snowing. There's a penalty flag down. Began snowing just after the first half ended. Roughing the passer. Winnipeg 52. First down. Michael Gray called for roughing on Porras and uh, it almost looks like if you check the clouds around here the heavy clouds as though it might continue snowing. Well, on this when it snows like this I don't think it bothers anybody in particular it might end up being a little bit slippier in the fourth quarter but right now it doesn't it's no big deal really except for the guys that have the shields on then it's going to be tougher for them they're going to need some windshield wipers or a squeegee or something. Chris Walby we talked about him the right tackle of the Blue Bomber offensive line will not return he suffered a knee injury in the first half. With the penalty, the Tie Cats first down at the bomber 32. Martin Sarton carrying the ball, but finding no running room, and he may have lost a yard. Battle again to the outside. You know, he's played an awful lot of middle linebacker in his career, but has adjusted very well to the outside this year. Well, a fairly good mix of plays by both teams, but uh, the Bombers have run so many more plays as they have held onto the ball. Porras finds Richard Estelle at the Blue Bomber 15 and a half yard line with a pinpoint throw, and they rule that Estelle was able to stay inbounds. And the Tie Cats have quickly moved deep into Winnipeg territory with the wind at their backs in this third quarter which is a quarter obviously that Hamilton has to capitalize on. I wonder if Hamilton will take advantage of Rod Hill. Maybe that leg's going to bother him. He won't be able to push off and come back and cover his receivers as well. Porras straight back to throw. Slips, regains his footing and looks for Winfield in the end zone but he got caught in a crowd. Aaron Brown and Rod Hill, James West were all back there. Winfield not able to get free and go after the ball. You see, in Winfield will release inside, but a good deep drop by Aaron Brown, 53, and Rod Hill coming to the football breaks it up. Hill actually uh, got his legs tangled up with Winfield's. Winfield went down. Second down and 10 as Porras barks out and points out instructions in the huddle. The ball at the Blue Bomber 15 yard line. Fowler slips chasing Porras who also gets away from another bomber and then throws an incomplete pass. Daryl Sampson had also come in from his defensive halfback spot. Porras able to elude that rush and we see what an effect the snow has had already on the playing field and the customers at Winnipeg Stadium who have bundled up a little bit tighter. With seeing Fowler slip like that makes me think that now the receivers are in command when they run their patterns. One or two simple moves can really set a defender off balance and make him slip. So the Tiger Cats, unless they pull a fake here, will have to settle for a field goal by Osbaldiston from the Winnipeg 22. Torres puts it down, Osbaldiston puts it up and through, and it's now 18-14 Winnipeg. This CFL playoff game is a Foster's Lager telecast on the Canadian Football Network. Well, it's all in your mind how cold it is. They always say that, and this fan doesn't think it's very cold at Winnipeg Stadium. The Blue Bombers leading Hamilton by four. Toronto Argonaut head coach Bob Obilovich is with us. He, of course, will meet the winner of this game next Sunday in Toronto. Bob, your thoughts on what's happened so far? Well, I think it's a pretty even football game right now. I think that uh, both teams have capitalized on some uh, miscues that have helped the other get points early in the game, and uh, I do think that Winnipeg's offense has been a little more consistent, so... Uh, if Hamilton can sustain the drive they just had there for the rest of the game, uh, you know, maybe they'll do a better job. Are you surprised the way Winnipeg has been able to neutralize the, the rush of the Hamilton Tire Cuts? Well, they have a pretty uh, experienced offensive line in there, Neil. Uh, if Walby's out of there now, that may affect him somewhat because he's one of their better offensive linemen. But uh, they have been giving him good protection. But I also noticed they're trying to get Salisbury outside a lot more, sprinting him a little more to trying to you know keep that pass rush from getting to him. Mm -hmm. 
So they're doing some different things offensively that, that you haven't seen, and you played this Bomber team twice in a row here in recent weeks. Well, they, they tried to do a little bit of that with him earlier, and uh, I just think that in our game, uh, when they did it with him, he wasn't real effective at it, so uh, they probably practiced it a little bit more, and, and he's doing a better job of throwing on the run, it looks like, today than he did earlier. In the last couple of games when you did play Winnipeg, it was, according to both to both sides, it was quite a battle. You you have the luxury of having a bit of a week off and getting lick, licking your wounds. Winnipeg hasn't had that opportunity. Well, that's the advantage of finishing first. <laughs> we all know that, and uh, there's no doubt about it that uh, some of our players uh, in the last couple ball games against Winnipeg and Hamilton have gotten a lot of bumps and bruises, and we welcome the week rest, and uh, it's helped us, and we should be a lot fresher for the next game than we have been for a while. Bob, I won't even ask you who you'd prefer to meet next Sunday because I know what you're going to say. Why did you ask? <laughs> Thank you, Bob Abelovich. We appreciate it. The head coach of the Toronto. I didn't ask. I said I would. Head coach of the Thanks, Toronto Bob. Argonauts joining us. Nick Bastaya shaken up as we chatted with Bob Abelovich and they've put in. Stan Miklos, I asked Mike Riley yesterday who was going to be your seventh offensive lineman. He said Stan Miklos, he's played there before and he's playing there again. Jesse mishandling a pass and Frank Robinson I believe got the tip and picked it off. Yes he did. The Thai Cats take over in Winnipeg territory at the 47 yard line. Frank Robinson who has his family here in Winnipeg from the days when, when he was a Winnipeg Blue Bomber does a good job of reacting to a football in a very slippery situation. Watch he has to come up. He's losing his balance but he still has the presence of getting his hands underneath. Well, mishandled balls will become not necessarily a common sight, but we'll see more of that if the snow continues at Winnipeg Stadium. Ty Cats down by four. Martin Sarton carries right side. Hit hard by Daryl Sampson. He got across the Winnipeg 45 to the 44 for a gain of three yards. What a collision there. We've seen an awful lot of running backs today, more specifically Martin Sarton and Tim Jesse hit up in and then try to get to the outside. As the game goes on, we can see the field being covered with snow. It'll be more slippery, and it's time to get the shoes changed because it is getting slippery. Second down for the Tie Cats at the Winnipeg 44. About eight yards to go. The pass is complete to Martin Sarton down at the Bomber 32-yard line. Well, I said earlier, this will help the receiver. The receiver knows where he's going, whereas the guy in coverage, be it a linebacker or a halfback, doesn't have that luxury. Nick Bastai, who came off the last play, will, there, I don't think there's any doubt he'll be back in the left guard when Winnipeg takes the ball. Walby out for the game. That's why Mikawas went in on the Bomber offensive line the last time they had the ball. Ty Katz, Winnipeg 32. Porras finds Estelle. Inside the 25 of the Bombers near their 22 yard line close to first down yardage. The race is on get those shoes changed before you have to get back on the field. I think the quarterbacks that have and I think we have two of them today that have strong arms that don't necessarily need the body motion to get good zip on the ball. It will help them because as they plant two, they will slide. So I think we'll see the quarterbacks both course and Salisbury throwing a little bit more at their upper body than the right using the rest of the body. The ball's at the Winnipeg 23 or thereabouts as Porus keeps and appears to have the Hamilton first down. Ten minutes, 20 seconds left. We're in the third quarter at Winnipeg Stadium. The Bombers leading the Ticats 18 to 14. Trevor Kenner, the Blue Bomber place kicker, also fiddling around with some different footwear and we Seeing a lot of that now. Well, I'm sure when Hamilton came here on the road trip, they packed every shoe that, there's, that there is in Ivor Wynn Stadium because you never know what's going to happen. Ticats first down, Winnipeg 21, Jet Tommy carrying. And he runs into Delbert Fowler. Yes, sir, I think we can get you a pump in a seven, <laughs> seven and a half. We, I, we only have white in stock, but we can order the black. Yes, the teams are well equipped footwear wise. Delbert Fowler enjoying the brisk weather as Tom Porras drops back the pass and throws in the end zone for DiPietro. The pass a little bit low. DiPietro had position on Daryl Sampson, 
But the pass was low, and the Ticats will send out their field goal team as they take advantage of a Robinson interception and move deep into Winnipeg territory. But for the second time this quarter, can't get it into the end zone. No, and they got the same situation they had earlier in the game. I believe it was in the first quarter where Porras hit DiPietro up the middle when it middle was vacated by Benny Thompson. He was coming on a blitz. And we'll see how as Ballaston deals with keeping his plant foot in place on this slippery field. Well, he handles it okay as Porras holds. The kick is good. And it's now a one-point Winnipeg lead, 18-17 for the Blue Bombers. 8.57 left in the third quarter. Well, on a day like this, you sometimes need a little help to stay warm, and the Bomber mascots, Buzz and Boomer, give that to the fans. The players have a heater. That was the Blue Bomber bench. Tim Jesse carries for Winnipeg on first down after the Osbaldiston field goal. There's a flag down as Jesse was stopped in his tracks. Osbaldiston with a 29-yard field goal that came at 6.03 of the third quarter to make it 18-17 Winnipeg. Procedure, Winnipeg 72, decline, second down. Well, they set number two for the Bombers, who is backup quarterback Lee Saltz. John Salisbury still at quarterback. It was procedure, though, decline, second down, and 10, maybe 10 and a half for the Bombers. As Salisbury throws to Buster Ryan. And he's across the 45, out to the Bomber, 47-48. That's a first down. Salisbury wasting no time going back to the things that he had success with in the first half, and that was using his backs and his inside receivers. Mike Riley said they wanted to get the ball in Rhymes' hand as much as they could. Kickoff returns, reverses, sweeps, and obviously throwing him the ball. From the 48, Salisbury rolls right, throws, intended for James Murphy, makes the catch with shields all over him. Gain of 15 more. Murphy makes an awfully good catch, catching in his hands and protecting with his body. It's not easy to go down and worry about your plant and come back. That time Salisbury got the ball in there before Murphy had a chance to come back to him. Awfully good timing on the play. Murphy sometimes will drop footballs that there is no explanation for, and then he'll make a catch like that, getting hit just as the ball gets there. To kind of make up for it, but you wonder why he drops the other ones. Here's Jesse running and fighting for yardage on first down. Gets five or six. There is a flag. And once again, it's procedure against the Blue Bombers. Those are the little things that can drive you crazy as a coach. Can also spoil a good drive. Procedure, Winnipeg 64, first down repeated. That's Bob Molly, the right guard, called for procedure. There he is, left side of your screen, just comes out of his stance a hair too quickly. Wants to get as much of an advantage on Patrick Swoops as he can. 65, Nick Vestaya back in at left guard. He was shaken up and had to be replaced by Stan Mikowas. The penalty total. The Bombers, most penalized team in the league, and they've out penaltyed Hamilton 9-2 to today. Salisbury throws, and it's no good. Robinson was there for Hamilton, intended for whiny Daryl Corbin, also in the area, as Salisbury tried to force that one in there. The Delbert Fowler changing footwear. The shoes that they're putting on now have the nickname the Shark. They've got the outside of the shoe has long shark-like teeth, the inside the smaller nubs, and they feel that that'll get give them better traction in this condition. Second and 15, Blue Bombers at the Hamilton 53. 6.50 left, third quarter, Winnipeg ahead by one. Salisbury, lots of time. Over the middle, and it's tipped, I believe, by Robinson. And then Rhymes couldn't bring it in. I think Robinson got a piece of it. Maybe he didn't, but Rhymes couldn't catch it. Well, Robinson, I think, had a big part to do with it. That linebacker in core 38, see how they start to move with the flow of the offense. Now they're all coming over. Robinson is working very hard, and sure enough, you can see he breaks up that play with his left hand. Outstanding movement by the linebackers of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Not much to choose between the punters today. As Bob Cameron lines up on third and 15. Football at the Hamilton 53-yard line. Cameron will kick it away from his 45. 
And he gets an excellent kickoff into the wind. Winfield way back to the three. And Earl Winfield finds some room. This is what he's done all season long. Look at Winfield. Earl Winfield is finally brought down at the bomber 12 or 13 yard line. What an effort. It was just a matter of time before Winfield and it's unfortunate. I think this might come back. Now the penalties against Winnipeg. Winfield with a big play. Foster's Lager is a proud sponsor of CFN all the way to the Grey Cup. Well Earl Winfield just increased the heart rate of Hamilton fans with a punt return that defies description. Watch it. 91 yards and you saw the start of it right there. Outstanding balance right there. What a great play. Just gets tripped up at the end. Tripped over his own teammate Scott Flagel who was trying to get that last block that would get him into the end zone. On first down from the bomber 16 Jed Tommy carries for five or six down near the 10. It's hard to believe that Winfield who I saw limping yesterday in practice has a sore ankle. <laughs> he has one. He should have one all the time the way he ran that last one. Haven't heard from Winfield all day but that's the kind of thing he can do to turn a game around. Second down Porras throws behind the intended receiver and nearly picked off by James Jefferson. And so Hamilton once again this quarter will have to send out their field goal team after getting deep into Winnipeg territory. Well in this weather you take what you can get and right now it's hopefully three points off the foot of that man Paul is Baldiston who's had a good day. Trevor Kennard and Paulus Baldiston have each kicked three field goals. This attempt by as Baldiston will come from around the 17 yard line. Porras puts it down as Baldiston puts it up and through and Hamilton now has a two point advantage and with the score Hamilton 20 Winnipeg 18. Let's pause 10 seconds for stations from coast to coast to identify themselves. You're watching the Canadian Football Network. You know, Neil, the Tie Cats have been deep, as I said, three times. They've had to settle for field goals. You wonder at the end of the game if we won't look back on their inability to get into the end zone as being a key. Well, I think you have to come away sometimes when you're down that deep with some big points bigger than just three. Tim Jesse attempting to run wide to the left was hooked early by Arnold Grievous, who took him back about 30 yards, but uh, Jesse will be stopped for a gain of or a loss rather of six or seven which is significant enough as far as Hamilton is concerned and Winnipeg as well. If the Hamilton defense can carry the mo the wave or partial wave and the momentum that they were able to build up in the on that Winfield return alone they can get themselves pretty good field position if they can stop Winnipeg here. Second down Blue Bomber 17 yards to go from there. 28 yard line Salisbury throws deep Rhymes is open and has the ball at the tie cat 38. Buster Rhymes gets a chance with a big play on his own but it isn't the first play in the first pattern he comes in makes an adjustment when he sees Sean Salisbury make his adjustment. And you can't give the defensive secondary this much time. They can't hold up this long. Outstanding protection. Good adjustment by Bob Molly coming to the outside of Rota Huskers to pick up that stunt. The football is at the Hamilton 38 yard line. Blue Bombers first and 10. Tony Johns carrying left side. Tough yardage. Perhaps game three. 309 was, left third quarter Neil I'm sorry 309 left and it's a two point Hamilton lead I'm gonna say that was a big big play by the offensive line and the offense in general of Winnipeg that's tough on a secondary when they have to wait that long and stay in coverage that long they're gonna have to get the Salzburg and get to him a lot faster and get to him in front of him not from the outside in second down and six at the Hamilton 34. Salisbury with good time to Ken Whiney. He catches it 
And it's to the tie cat 26. That's a blue bomber first down. Once again coming to the back side. Salisbury who you don't see looks to the front side. Whiney just waits steps back and gets enough for the first down. John Salisbury has really spread the football around today. Five different people have caught passes from Salisbury who sprints to his left throws back over the middle intended for rhymes and a flag comes down. Forward pass interference. Hamilton number 16. First down. Howard Fields is caught coming over the back of the receiver. I thought his timing looked pretty good. I would say it did. Al Bruno was most distraught over that call. But the Bombers are on the tight cat 14 with a first down. Jesse carrying for three. Frank Robinson got a hold of his leg early and brought him down. And maybe twisted that leg a little bit while making the tackle as Jesse stays down. You know, Al Bruno understands that injuries are part of football, as every coach does. You know, you think about other head coaches that have had to deal with them, Bob Obilovich, Joe Farragelli. But when the injuries come from things like spider bites, Jim Rockford had his foot bitten by a spider just innocently a week or so ago, and his foot blew up to the size of a watermelon. Tony Champion's in the sauna, relaxing, and a light bulb breaks, falls down, inflicts a 10-inch or a 10-stitch cut in his leg. You just wonder when it's going to stop. Yeah, they've had some weird things happen to them, Neil, and of oh. course, uh, Kerrigan and Mike Walker going out for the season with uh, Kerrigan a shoulder injury, Walker with a torn bicep. The, the two, probably the two best players on their team, if to make that statement. And yet they've uh, they bounced back and they're in the East semifinal and they lead by two points with a minute 20 left, third quarter. But the Bombers are second down and seven at the Hamilton 11-yard line. Salisbury throws has a man open. It's Cochran and he's to the three. Terry Cochran becomes the sixth man to catch a football from Sean Salisbury. Cochran just straight out into the flat, the other two receivers to that side, go down and break inside. You saw Cochran just to the left, 31, goes in motion, so he gets a good jump on the man in coverage. And those other two receivers really end up not picking, but blocking off any pursuit. Tim Jesse back in to replace Cochran. First and goal, Bombers, Hamilton four. Jesse has the ball, and he has a touchdown. Good tough running for only four yards. But just for, far enough to get him in. Look at him, dude, just slugging it in here. He's going through three or four people. He's stopped by Flago, but that spin takes him into the end zone. And you can't fumble in the end zone. Trevor Kennard will attempt to add the convert, which he does, and the Blue Bombers have regained the lead. It's now 25 to 20. Winnipeg, 34 seconds left. In the third quarter, and that long throw by Salisbury to Buster Rhymes set this all up. Earth to the Lee Salts. Earth to the Lee Salts. Is that great? <laughs> when it comes down to these situations, it sounds kind of like a cliche, but when it gets close to the goal line, you can't let anything stop you. Well, Jim you know, Jesse they, had that attitude. They say the playoffs turn the intensity notch up at least one degree. Neil, you certainly know all about that, but Tim Jesse's performance today to me has been an example of that. He has run hard and tough every time he's had the ball. 
Yeah, and I think it comes to the two things. One, he had said this week that he wanted to make a difference. He wanted to prove that he could be effective. And secondly, you just, you don't know when you're going to get another chance. It's another season. We've talked about that. But he might not get down near the goal line again. He wants to make it count as Chris Walby, the man on the crutches right there. We're not used to seeing him in his civvies. We just hope it's not a serious injury. Trevor Kennard kicks off to Wally Zatilny. And Zatilny is back to the Hamilton 40 or 41, I believe. It's getting more difficult to tell all the time. Jesse, we talked about 13 carries for 65 yards, three catches for 35 more. Actually, the ball's at the 47 <laughs> of the Tie Cats. Oh, wow. We get a little guy with a broom out there. Tom Porras taking a long time. And he does get the playoff in time. Lots of time in the pocket. Throws, completes to Sarton. He runs into Delbert Fowler after a short game, maybe two yards. Two seconds left in the third quarter as the snow really intensifies here at Winnipeg Stadium. It did not snow at all until halftime. And there is a slight breeze and that breeze will be at the back of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers throughout the fourth quarter. Morris sprints left. And Romel Andrews gets a piece of him and James West finishes him off. And on that high note for Winnipeg, the third quarter comes to an end. The Blue Bombers lead by five. From the warmth of indoors, and you can come right up to the window, you might not be able to see us. We might look back on Scott Flagel's inadvertent trip of Earl Winfield as a big play. A touchdown would have given the Tiger Cats, though not the lead, a much bigger lift than Paul Osbaldison's field goal. Over to you, Tom. Well, playoffs on the prairies in November, uh, you can expect weather like this, Dave. And I think both of these football teams should be commended for the fine effort they're displaying in not ideal conditions. Gentlemen, thank you for your thoughts. It's third down and nine. Tie Cats as the fourth quarter begins. Hamilton now working into the win. And as Baldiston's kick reflects that, it's short to shorten. At the Bomber 35-yard line, and he's up to about the 38. Well, they have special equipment to clean this artificial turf at Winnipeg Stadium. This they call a sweeper. And during the break between the third and fourth quarters, the man driving it was very busy. He made one trip around the field, so we can at least see some of the artificial turf now for a while. That's not going to last long. You're right, Neil, the way it's snowing. Salisbury setting up a screen to Tony Johns. And Johns breaks some tackles and gets a Blue Bomber first down. John showing us the same type of effort that got Tim Jesse into the end zone. You know, when the conditions get like this, it's a ten they're Defensive players have a tendency to try to hit and tackle in the upper body. Well, you can use that to your advantage. Daryl Corbin ends up getting hurt on this play, but you see, they don't wrap up. They go for the hit, and though a big hit finally put him down, it wasn't until after Johns has a good first down, and it almost looks like Corbin just had the wind knocked out of him. Or maybe favoring that uh, right arm that was broken earlier, Neil, difficult to tell. Mike Riley. The 35-year-old head coach of the Bombers looking on is 58-year-old Al Bruno does likewise. Corbin looks like he's okay, we're happy to tell you. Well, it's uh, temperature-wise very similar in Regina for the West semifinal as it is here in Winnipeg, but it's not snowing there. Salisbury goes long for James Murphy, and he makes the catch. Salisbury throws this ball in a perfect spot. Good coverage by Shields, but he's behind Murphy. And this ball to the inside, look at it. Couldn't be any better. All Murphy has to do is put his arms up, not break stride at all. 
James Murphy dropped one early but has come back to have a tremendous game for the Blue Bombers after a tremendous season that saw him catch 76 passes for 1409 yards. He is their game breaker and he has the Bombers deep in Hamilton territory around the 25 yard line. Jesse takes a handoff tries the left side and finds no room at all. You think Bob in a year's time yeah I remember last year we came for the Eastern final against Toronto Winnipeg and the receiving core that Winnipeg had it was Murphy but he was flanked by Jeff Boyd Perry Tuttle Nick Araki in the inside and now there's only one and a lot of it the burden and the pressure is carried by him and he's responded very well. Yes he, he took it as a challenge this year and went out and had a big year second down and nine Blue Bombers the football is around the Ticat 25 yard line. Salisbury throws a receiver slipped and fell on the play. That was Ken Whiney tried to get back up and go after the ball but couldn't get there. Whiney's performance so far in this game has not allowed Hamilton to become one sided on defense not to just strictly focus on James Murphy when you can spread the ball out like Salisbury has done you really make it tough on a defense to guess or to try to overload one receiver. Trevor Kennard. And Paulus Bolleston of Hamilton have both had very good days kicking field goals. Kennard will attempt one here from as near as we can tell the 32 33 yard line in that neighborhood. Cameron puts it down. Kennard has it up and long enough and the Blue Bombers lead grows to eight points 28 to 20. Foster's is a proud sponsor of CFN and it's playoff and great cup coverage. Paulus Baldison had a perfect day going for himself until the last kick. Watch his left foot. It's a little bit tight and it pushes his right foot through, thus hooking the football. Hits it halfway up instead of a little bit below half. Salisbury on a first down pass finds Randy Faby for very close to first down Winnipeg yardage. Haven't heard much of Randy Faby so far in this game, but he could become an important factor going down the way. Kind of forget about him, and in the fourth quarter, he'll be sneaking in the middle. That moves the ball to the bomber 45 yard line. Nine minutes, 45 seconds left. We're in the fourth quarter. Winnipeg leading Hamilton 28 21. Oakville Trafalgar High School is where Randy Cady played his high school football. Jesse carrying on first down. And he'll get four, maybe five yards. That's Grover Covington, who is out of the game at this stage with an ankle problem. And that's not good news for the Thai Cats and their supporters. I'm sure Grover Covington misses his old mate. So we look at Mark Napierkowski filling in for him. Mike Walker, they work so well together and complement each other so much. I think it's been tougher on Covington with Walker out. Second and six, Jesse out of the backfield. Collides head on with Frank Robinson. Broke at least even on the collision and got the bomber first down. Once Jesse continues to have an impressive day. Sorry, Bob, I was going to say once again, Salisbury going to the running back. He looks deeper, but nothing comes open quickly. So go to the relief man. Winnipeg's getting their backs out because Hamilton is not forcing them by blitzing their linebackers. You have to say Salisbury has called a clever game. Yes he has. Play selection has been very good. He throws for James Murphy and completes it. Was he in bounds? They say he was. Down in Hamilton territory in the neighborhood of the Ticat 35 yard line. Great position by the official in this situation. It's tough on them. Even though the sidelines have been swept. It's get a tough call Salisbury. Faking to the left and rolling out. Great position by the offensive lineman, Nick Vestaya, by giving Salzburg that outside so he isn't pressured. Zips that ball in there to Murphy. And we saw evidence there of why they cleared the sideline so the officials could see the boundaries. And they got a good look at that as the Blue Bombers move deeper into Hamilton territory. Salisbury from those numbers having an excellent day looking for Buster Rhymes. And he can't make the catch. In the Hamilton end zone. The way that ball was thrown up Buster Rhymes was simply trying to get underneath it almost like catching a punt. 
He complained a little bit after it was over. You see him come off trying to lull the defensive back to sleep and then exploding, but that's just darn good coverage by 16 Howard Fields and Flagel coming in late. Well thrown ball by Salisbury, almost right on the money. 7.52 left, fourth quarter. There's an injured tie cat, Daryl Corbin, their middle linebacker, who is back today from injury. He's been shaken up a couple of times now. Well, he had broken the radius bone in his right arm, and that's the one that works and helps move the, the wrist. And even though he has a cast on it and it is probably pretty much healed, shots on that arm will affect him, and it's going to hurt. And that's why I think sometimes we've seen him go in and out. I don't think it'll be much longer. Ray Jones helping him off and sort of pointing at the arm. Second down and 10, Blue Bombers. We're not sure where exactly the ball is. It's in Hamilton territory. Salisbury to Tony Johns on a screen. Nice move by Johns, and he's down to the Hamilton 15 or 20 yard line. A little bit of play action by Winnipeg. Gets their back out as Howard Fields makes a saving tackle and also stays down because he had a fire through being blocked. And he caught Tony Johns in the spot where I don't think you want to hit him, and that's in a knee coming upwards. That's good to see Howard Fields back up. He took a heck of a shot in the head area, making that tackle on Tony Johns. Well, Howard Fields being hurt is a rare sight. In eight years, he's played eight years in Hamilton. He's missed one football game. Remarkable endurance record for Howard Fields. His spot will be taken by Donahue Grant, number seven. Well, we're ready to go again, and uh, one thing those sweepers have done is uncover the yard stripe. So we can tell you that the Bombers are inside the Hamilton 20 at about the 19 with a first down. Tony Johns carrying, and he's close to the tight cat 10. Seven or eight yards for John. Impressed by the way the running backs on both sides of the football today have been very conscious of, cautious of holding on to the football. When it gets tough and in tight, if you're not got both hands in the ball, at least one underneath and one over top, they can pop out quickly. Saw a shot there of Mike Riley with a smile on his face. I mean, head coaches don't smile with 6.40 to go on their team up by seven, but that's typical Riley. Second down and two, Jesse carrying off the right side. He got to the 10 and maybe just inside it. He'll be close to a Blue Bomber first down. Giving you that same short yardage situation with Rhymes going 32 just to the right of your screen. He's a slot back, but when he comes back in motion, he can be like a lead blocker. And sure enough, he does that with the help of Tony Johns, who is kicking out Mike Robinson, and Tim Jesse just tries to find an area. Sean Salisbury shows you exactly how much is needed. Well, the fans are waiting, I believe, for Riley to send in the short yardage team, but he's not going to bother with that. Oh, they went in. They were in on the second down play, and so they'll stay in there for third and inches. Salisbury keeping the ball. Mikawas thinks they have a first down, and they probably do. With six minutes, ten seconds left, Winnipeg leading 28-21 with a chance to really take command here. Simply a quarterback sneak behind Lyle Bauer, Molly, and Steve Rota Huskers. You know, Mike Riley said he wanted today to hold on to the football. That's exactly what he's done. 27 first down. That's a, a season high for the Blue Bombers. Tony Johns carrying, slipped away from one man, got to the five of the Ticats, maybe inside. It's key to keep the feet moving. Watch Tony Johns come off a shot. Arnold Grievous gets a pretty clean, but because he's got his feet underneath him, not leaning one way or the other, he's able to keep his momentum and keep it going upfield. Winnipeg offensive line has received a lot of criticism this year. They have played very well today. Second down and goal. Salisbury wants to throw and does for a touchdown. Tony John.
A little bit of play action to the left side. Holds the defense just for that second. Allows Tony Johns with a bit of motion to get ahead of the defensive secondary man out into the flat. Trevor Kennard will attempt to add the convert that makes it Winnipeg 35 and Hamilton 21 with 5.06 left in the fourth quarter. Well, during that break, the Winnipeg players got the fans here at Winnipeg Stadium going. You can see them and hear them as the Ticats look at a second and seven. Dylan throws complete to Richard Estelle inside the Bomber 25 to about the 24. Two minutes and 52 seconds left in the fourth quarter, and the Bombers leading the Ticats 35 to 21. Now it's the time for the Tire Cats to hop to it a bit in and out of the huddle. Use the clock to their advantage. And the clock is running again as Dillon brings them out. It's down to 2.40. Dillon for Winfield in the end zone. And it's not the way. James Jefferson was beaten on the play but was able to recover and break up the pass. Winfield did have a step on Jefferson, but the ball hung a little bit too long in the air. and Winfield had to come back for it. There's a great shot. Because that time lapse between Winfield coming back to the football and Jefferson closing the distance between the receiver, he was able to knock it away. Good aggressive play by the corner. Jefferson playing on a sprained ankle today, but it hasn't bothered his performance. Dillon. Bringing the tie cats out, but uh, the play is whistled dead before it started, as we're going to have a penalty. And it's against the Blue Bombers. I think Winnipeg's thinking that Miles Gorell moved when Mike Gray moved, but I think the play was called dead because Michael Gray engaged with Miles Gorell. Offside, Winnipeg 52, second down. Left side of the screen, Michael Gray will come out of his stance, and they hook up, and as soon as Michael Gray touches Miles Gorell, they, they call it dead. So it's second down and five. Tie catch at the Bomber 19. Dillon, lots of time. He'll take off with it. And will be hit by Benny Thompson around the Bomber 10-yard line, but that's good enough for a Hamilton first down with 2 minutes and 25 seconds left on the clock. Benny Thompson, known as the hitman, or if he isn't, he should be, has taken that shield off and going without it. Dillon gets an opportunity to step up into the pocket, but still no one's open, and he thinks he has more room than he does because Benny Thompson closes very quickly. Now the football is inside the Winnipeg 10, so it's first and goal to go for the Ticats. Dillon swings it out to Martin Sarton. He's got one man to beat, but he slips. Sarton against Rod Hill one-on-one. -on -one. Sarton tried to move inside and kind of lost his footing. Went down at about the Bomber four-yard line. Quick throw to the right side. Winfield's got to come down and take off pursuit, and boom! He takes on Delbert Fowler. Delbert Fowler's cut. Peeking in the backfield, watching Martin Sarton. <laughs> he can. <laughs> not a bad block for a wide receiver. A receiver's dream. Catching a linebacker, daydreaming. Second and goal. Tie catch. Draw play. Sarton. Stop short. One yard line. Funny how you when you see things and they look good for a second, watch the hole open up and then Stan Mikwas, who's playing center Dale Sanderson and playing him neutral, waiting for something to materialize. Then he makes his move. He will not commit one side or the other and open up a gap. Heads up play. Excellent show of strength by Mikwas, who will have Leon Hatsiano and is right now in replacing Rod Hill. Third and goal. Tie catch at the Blue Bomber one yard line. Dillon had nobody to give it to, but got it in anyway. A broken.
broken play results in a tie cat touchdown and with 145 to go they have a chance to get within seven if his ball is in, can kick the convert watch 27 Martin certain he doesn't get off the mark Dylan's left out on his own an island and he knows that he just can't he's not gonna have another shot at it so that one spin he just is able to break the plane great play by Todd Dillon keeps their chances alive so in fairness to the Ticats, the assignment wasn't broken, but Sarton couldn't get there. <laughs> He's so anxious, and you put so much into the into the step, getting off the mark. He wanted some power, a little bit too much. Osbaldiston adds the convert, and with a minute 45 to go, it's Winnipeg 35, Hamilton 28. Well, Todd Dillon, you can just imagine what he's thinking. Oh, no. Well. Might as well make something good out of something bad, and that he does. Takes a pretty good shot at the end. Well, Michael Gray hit him before he got to the goal line, but Dylan wouldn't go down and was able to lunge forward far enough to get the ball to the goal line and in for the touchdown. So we might have ourselves some finish here at Winnipeg Stadium. Well, Winnipeg will respond with minute 45 left on the clock with in this receiving situation with their hands team and that's what they call the short kickoff specialists mostly linebackers running backs slot backs receivers who handle the ball on a regular basis and a couple of big guys up front to take the tie cats on so they can't penetrate and get to the football as Baldiston well kick a bouncer down the middle Buster Rhymes at the bomber 28. Rhymes looking for the sideline and finding the out of bounds marker around the bomber 37 with a minute 39 to go in the fourth quarter. Al Bruno feeling he's defense, yes, can in fact stop Winnipeg's offense and Mike Riley having to put a couple of first downs together, as many as he's had so far in this game. Now is the time when he's got to put a few of them together. Terrific day for Sean Salisbury given the weather conditions. Remembering it did not snow in the first half. Jesse running on first down and getting absolutely nothing. A minute 35 to go. That only used four seconds. I wonder if maybe the Thai Cats would use their timeout now or on the next play. Neil to save 20 seconds that they can't control when they have the ball they can control things. Well, they won't use it now they're going to let the bombers run at least one more play and hope to stop them. Second down and 10 bombers from there 37. Salisbury runs right into the arms of Skillman. Bastia blocked Skillman but he slipped off him and right into Salisbury's arms and there's Al Bruno indicating that they want their timeout now. Big play by Skillman. He gets up before Nick Bastia can put a hit on him and turn him back to the inside so Salisbury can get to the outside. What a great play by Skillman. A minute 15 to go and the clock won't start now till the ball is snapped. Had Bruno not called the timeout, the Bombers would have been able to eat up at least another 17 or 18 seconds before they punted the ball. Well, this is a time where Al Bruno's special teams, specifically the punt return team, has to work hard of, at jamming the Winnipeg front line and really disrupting their coverage, allowing the Winfielders and Tilney to pick a seam and get the ball back upfield in good position. Cameron does have some wind with him on this punt. You would think he'd try to kick it away from Winfield. Good snap. Cameron with time. End over end kick that will bounce. And it bounces away from Winfield and Zatoni. Winfield has trouble handling it. And then is down at the 32 or 33 of Hamilton with a minute three left in the fourth quarter. Although it wasn't a pretty punt, I think Bob Cameron will take it when you get the ball on the ground bouncing around. You limit the chances of a return in respect to if it was caught on the fly. Todd Dillon came off the bench with five minutes to go in the game, led the Ticats to a touchdown if they can do it again. 
we may have overtime. Romney Hamilton 33. Mikolas has Dillon. He gets away, though, and gets the football away and saves a huge loss. And then James West gave him a late hit, and a flag came down, and then West was leveled. Jason Riley deciding he would give West some of his own medicine. So we'll have to see how they sort this one out. Jason Riley reacting as he should to protect his quarterback, but in this situation, Cooler heads should prevail because this penalty, if in fact it's called against the Tiger Cats, they're going to hurt them. What? James West definitely has a penalty. We're not sure about Jason Riley, but we're about to find out. Of roughing the passer on Winnipeg, unnecessary roughness on Hamilton after the play. First down repeat. All right, Jason Riley's going to hear about that one. You just know it. Al Bruno with his team having a great chance to move 15 yards downfield, and it was lost. Well, Mick West in there with only one hand. You see him pawing away with that left. If he had two, here's the extra oomph that West is going to be called for. And then a shot came after that that Riley put on West. Well, two silly penalties, really. And it leaves. Hamilton in the same situation they were before Winfield with the ball he's to the 40 to the 41 yard line a couple of yards short of a tie cat first down 51 seconds left fourth quarter Hamilton trailing by seven points this quick out to Winfield hoping that a couple of blocks will spring him but watch the pursuit by West right here he comes all the way across the field and makes the hit to put Winfield down second down and close to two for the tie cats Jed Tommy carrying and he has the first down to the Hamilton 45. You saw the clock on your screen 44 seconds left. What a game this has turned out to be 35 28 Blue Bombers the winner plays in Toronto next Sunday in the East final. Dillon throws to Estelle at the 50. And he's up to center field, close to another tie cat first down with 32 seconds left. With the type of defense Winnipeg's playing, it's going to take a catch plus an extra effort, breaking a couple of tackles. It's going to get the ball downfield for a big play because Winnipeg's dropping off pretty well. And they're going to measure Neil to see if it's a first down. It's that close, 32 seconds to go. You'd have to think that somewhere along the line here in this last half minute, They'll get the ball to Winfield again. He had it two plays ago, but I mean, obviously, he's the one you want to, whose hands you want to put it in to do the kind of thing you just talked about. Well, Winfield has been notorious for catching the ball over the middle when a safety blitz occurs, but I don't think Benny Thompson will leave that safety open or that middle area open. I could be wrong, but. Tie catch, first and ten at center field. Dylan throws, intended for Winfield, but it's behind him. Down at the Blue Bomber 40 with 18 seconds left. And the task becomes that much more difficult for Hamilton each time they don't have success on a play. Dillon unhappy with himself because Winfield was open and Dillon just underthrew him. Second and 10, Ty Katz at center field. Dillon, quick pass to DiPietro. And he's close to a first down near the bomber 45 yard line with 13 seconds to go. But a penalty against the Thai Cats. Procedure Hamilton 62. Check it out. Left tackle Lloyd Fairbanks. Caught moving early. Dylan did a good job in that last play of picking up the blitz and throwing hot to DiPietro. Daryl Sampson, 30, came to that side. Second down and 15. Tie Cats at their 50. Time for at least two plays. Dylan throws. Winfield behind him at the 45 of Winnipeg. And the Tie Cats will have a third down with nine seconds left in the fourth quarter. 
Jefferson celebrating because he had tight coverage on Winfield and Dylan forced to put the ball in there tight and behind him this time. That's just great coverage. Even if he had caught it, Winfield was not going anywhere. And it comes down to this play for the Tire Cats. After the game, we'll select a Foster's MVP and talk with that player as Dylan drops back to throw, looks to Winfield at the sideline, finds him, but he's grabbed right away with three seconds on the clock. The Tire Cats don't get the first down. The ball will go over to the Blue Bombers, and that will seal the victory for Winnipeg. A seven point lead and only three seconds to go. Well, Hamilton led 11-3 after the first quarter. It was 18-11 Winnipeg at halftime, 25-20 the Bombers after the third. And as Sean Salisbury kneels down with the football, the game will end on a very exciting football game at Winnipeg Stadium with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers defeating the Hamilton Tiger Cats 35-28 in the Eastern semifinal. The Blue Bombers will now meet the Toronto Argonauts next Sunday in Toronto. Final for the right to go to the Grey Cup.